Good morning. Uh, okay. We are uh, representing Gulf University for Science and Technology in this conference, Drupal uh, Conf 2014. We are participating as one of the gold sponsors in this event. We are going to show you in this session our successful story of using the open source applications in general in the educational sector in our area. And uh, then uh, we will focus more on Drupal. But before I go into the details, we will distribute a small brochure of our university to each of you to just get, have an, a small idea about GUST. Gulf University for Science and Technology is located in a country, Kuwait, it's in the Middle East, a small country between Kuwait and uh, between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. We are the university established in 2002, and we are now almost 10 years old. We are going to show our success story of using the open source technologies in the educational sector. And we'll see how these things can work if you start using the open source application in general and also focusing on this one. Myself, I am an assistant professor of computer science. My name is Tahir Ali. And I'm also uh, playing, uh, I have two hats in the university. I am assistant professor and as well IT director in our university. So I'm managing the IT department. The, the most challenge or the bottleneck to be successful in any use of open source application is the, is the challenge to convince your upper management to go with open source application. Especially in our area, the culture of that, oh, okay, who's going to support that? The concept of security, business point of view, those companies who are giving us the close, providing the closed source applications or solutions, they will always try to fight that you, some organizations in the governmental section or even in the private section, especially in the area of Middle East, they don't go for open source applications. So still in our region, there is a little bit people scared from the word open source, okay? Well, how we are going to manage it, who is going to maintain it. So those all questions, I took a long time to convince when I joined, I took the responsibility of uh, IT department, uh, especially the, the applications area. It took me a long time to convince uh, my upper management. I want to go with the open source solutions. So there was a lot of questions regarding the security, the quality, the customizability of the product, uh, freedom, uh, flexibility of those products, all those points. I, I had to convince my upper management that, okay, using those on the long term, we will have a lot of benefits. And the most important factor out of all was that to convince them that long time, it's going to so, so save a lot of costs for you. And that's, that's, you know, when it comes to financial managers and financial directors, they love to, to hear such words. So this was the first bottleneck in 2008 where we were trying to start, build up a team which will focus just on open source solutions to provide different functionalities, services to our faculty, staff, and students. And we succeed in that. As a result, we start using a lot of open source applications. Here is a major list of applications. We have some more small, small, but this is the major list of applications that right now they are installed, currently working in our environment in the educational sector where we are using them, each of them it's, in, it's on this one. Of course, Drupal is one of the biggest one of them because I'm going to talk in a few slides about Drupal itself. And we have all other those applications. Moodle has been used as our official learning management system. We are using OTRS in the IT department for ticketing system. <coughs> so anybody needs any kind of service from IT department, whether a student, staff, or faculty, they log in and they create a ticket. We are using <coughs> Alfresco as a document management system between different entities in the university and so on. So we have different. We want the server side, we have Bonto, we have 
Linux. And uh, those are the solutions which we succeed to implement and use them as own open source application. Some of them now we are using not the standard community edition, we are using the professional edition or we are buying some services to, to integrate with our systems, but overall the concept is to use the open source application. And we succeeded in that. And today, on reality, in whole campus, I have just only one application, which is closed source PeopleSoft, our student information system. It was there since 2002, so it's not that easy to change your student information system. Uh, and uh, that's the main core application, which from the first day of any university you need it. So it was before I joined in 2002 when we established the university, PeopleSoft was there. Other than that, all the applications use this one. The main advantage, which I would like to say here, we've seen it and we practice it after using the open source application, is the integrity, integration between the applications. When it comes to open source and you have different applications and you'd like to integrate, integrate them, things becomes more flexible, things becomes more easier if you know the back end of it, and that makes things much easier, this one. That's our experience, that's what we have found out in four, five years after moving towards to the open source applications. When it comes to Drupal, Gus has <coughs> decided since 2008, 9, Kadim that Drupal will be our main content management system for building any websites in Gus. So far, we have implemented, I have a technical team of two developers, and we have implemented so far for our university around 24, 25 sites. Some, some of them are very simple sites, some of them with a lot of functionality and modules using them, and all are in-house development by our technical uh, Drupal team. And that was the main one. We choose Drupal for many reasons, flexibility, open source, clear and well, document API. Each release is giving us more features. We are very happy to what we heard right now with the technical team about Drupal 8 and what is going to present in Drupal 8 as new additions and features. So that was one of the reasons that Drupal has been used in Gus, this one. Most used models that we are using during our development lifecycle, different websites, views, rules, web forms, tokens, automatic node title, and because we have an LDAP server, so that's very important for us to use the LDAP integration. So these are most major mail rule, uh, models that we are using in our systems. Here is an example of some sites that we have built it up using the <coughs> GUST uh, websites. This is the GUST main website. We have then the library website. Those all websites which you are using to present them in GUST. The last slide which I would like to say, this question I have been asked so many times and during the conference because we have a booth. Why GUST is participating in such a conference? Because this is not an educational related conference. But we, we felt as the university administration, since we are using Drupal since 2008, and we use it a lot to build a lot of, uh, provide a lot of functionalities and services to our faculty and staff. So it, it is the responsibility of the university that we participate, we contribute the community of Drupal. So this year we decided to move towards to be one of the sponsors, the gold sponsors of the event. And hopefully we will try to continue this relationship with the Drupal Association in future to support this project. And maybe we involve more. We are planning now. Uh, we are working with the Drupal Association and maybe I have other couple of meetings the last two days. We are trying to make GUST as an official training center, a certified training center for Drupal in our area in the Middle East. Still, there is not a lot of awareness of a content management system and Drupal in uh, Middle East. So we are trying to reach to a kind of agreement either with the Drupal Association or with any certified partner of Drupal Association to make GUST as 
official training center and official testing center for those who are looking to be trained and certified in Drupal uh, in the future, in the near future, especially in our area. Thank you very much. And now I open the Piggy panel for any questions, if anybody has any questions. Thank you very much for your time and patience. Hope you enjoyed the trip and see you soon. Thank you. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, let me just make sure the microphone sounds good. Um, I really love this format, kind of fast paced. Um, and in fact, this presentation I've done here, I've given it as a 40 minute version, a 30 minute version, a 20 minute version. And um, so now I'm basically going to go through until the time's up. And let's see if I can rattle that through fast enough. So um, obligatory kind of the Twitter information. So I'm Miles. I'm the CEO of Icos. We're a Drupal shop. We specialize in e-commerce. That's it. We focus on all aspects of e-commerce experiences from building out great customer experiences at the front, integrating at the back. That's that. But this is all about content and us sharing some knowledge that we are learning along the way and continue to learn. So within e-commerce, um, well, this is just about usability, and what I, I love to call, it's the small stuff that when combined can make an enormous difference. And we deal with customers that sometimes spend some really large money on things like pay-per-click and Google and AdWords and SEO maybe a little less these days, but they find a lot of ways of getting addicted to spending that money, they're getting good at measuring it, and they can see the coins going in the top and the coins coming out the bottom, and that feels really good. But we talk to people and say, you yeah, know, this statistic is phenomenal. 1% right, increase in your conversion. And by the way, 1% can be really hard to get to, and that's kind of part of what we're talking about here, but can be the equivalent of 16% extra conversion. If you've got a company that's got a budget and they're spending, could be 100,000 a quarter, could be a lot more than that in some areas, and they, they, they took just a small percentage of that budget, worked through improving their user experience on their website, and really increased that conversion, the impact is enormous. The return on investment certainly justifies continually investing in the right area. And I say sometimes the right area is investing in your user experience, your design, your customer experience. So what we're really looking to do is I'm just going to share some of the things that we've learned. Some of it learned through anecdotes. Some of it we've learned through actually measuring. And some of it we've learned through mistakes. Um, so the f and, and oh, just on this slide here, the, what we're really saying is, generally speaking, if you think of two big levers, yeah, that you've got the persuasion, the marketing budget, getting people to even come to your site when you've got a commercial site comes with a cost. And on the flip side, what we're really talking about here today is what can you do to reduce the effort and the frustrations that are seemingly still around in a lot of websites. And I see it a lot in a lot of Drupal sites because it's so capable, but it also does throw out a layer of CRUD and systems messages. And you really need to get in the practice of helping to tidy that up. So classic example, forms. <laughs> My view on forms is very simple. You know, d don't make your visitor think. Let's make it as easy as possible. And don't worry, you don't have to take that in. That's far too small for anyone's eyesight. <laughs> and I'm standing close to it. But this was a study that did the classic. It kind of studied what is the impact of taking the same information and displaying it in different ways. Single page, multiple page, or with an accordion. Because we often get that request saying, you know, oh, yeah, like, you know we want to change. You know, customers with marketing people, they get called up like, you know, I've heard this. We should change. We should change. We should change the format. And what this study basically showed is it's nothing to do with the number of steps. In fact, if you have exactly the same form fields and you just lay it out in a different way, you're talking marginal gains to almost negligible. Certainly doesn't value the time and effort to, to build it. So if that doesn't kind of work, what does? Well, actually, what does is making it really easy. And on this particular slide, you see this John Newman kind of part. Now, what John Newman has just done is put his name, it's the, you know, he's done it in the first and surname in the same form. And you know, of a study where usability study people did this, the first, I've got some nods here of everyone who's done this, I've done this, I kind of, we get that form field. The first 19 people in this study did that. And it's like, well, hang on, you can, if you can kind of learn that, then you could separate that out. And, and you can make on the left-hand side, I think we've got an example of helping people understand what the form is trying to achieve. And people are still, you know, my email address is quite protected. I just can't stand getting spam. So give people a reason why you're asking for their email that's in context. So, and other things we can do is remove steps. Drupal's great. We're developers. We can do stuff. You know what? How many times you go to a website and it says, choose your card? 
and they're tiny little icons. And there's four visa icons, and is that the visa debit or the delta or, the, or whatever? And yeah, you can detect the credit cards. It's so easy. They're, they're, it's either based on first four digits or six if you're looking at China Bank. It's all, you know, that stuff is just readily available. And, and I would say go even further. Tell people what cards you accept, detect from the first few, and then, uh, why not then let them know, hey, great, you're using your Visa card. Welcome, whatever. You know, I think you can help this a lot. And um, I always like putting this up. It's been around with my slide deck for a number of years. Uh, you may even recognize the design from several years ago. It's an Apple website. I love this. It talks about, we talk about making things clear. And here we have three types of uh, shipping. Well, two-day shipping. Okay, it takes two days. Cost me $10. Next day, next day shipping. All right, comes next day. Everyone see what's wrong with this? Yeah, standard shipping. A month, three weeks, I don't know. And so uh, the, 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 these are things, these lack of clarity points can be, there's some are a little bit more flippant than others, but that lack of clarity in an e-commerce journey puts people off. Um, and generally speaking, when it comes to shipping goods, people care about two things, fast or cheap. And that depends on whether you've left your wife's present until the next day, and then you want it really fast. Or you're buying that thing, and you're like, hey, that's a kind of a novelty buy, and I don't mind, I'll use Alibaba. I'll wait 20 days for that sh shipping to come over. But that's what people really care, care about. So when you kind of know that, I think you can build a great experience and make it really clear to users what, um, uh, yeah, make it really clear. And again, you know, developers, we've got the ability, the front end engineering that we can now do, we can do so much more contextually in the browser. And this experience, right, I'm not picking on the Drupal site, but hands up who's done that, filled out the form, hit submit, don't know where they are, scrolled up and found some big red error message. You know, that, 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 that's, that's so frustrating. Because then you have to read in there, which bit did I do? And then you go and fix that problem and you submit it and it didn't auto save your password. And then you've got another thing. And I've been through that. Yeah, I'm glad we're nodding, right? We've all been through that system. That's driving people nuts. That is a great reason to leave. People leave through frustrations of sites. And this is an area that as developers, we can really do it. And you know what? You can think it through and you can reduce errors. Some little standard things. All this is doing is saying, you know, just looking. It, it, uh, and this is common in good experiences. But yeah, I, my feeling is there's more bad experiences than good. And e-commerce websites have been around for like two decades. It's like we really should have figured some of this stuff out by now, or you'd like to think it, it, it pervades across. So all this, this is about let's make things quicker, um, make things simpler. And I think there's really nice things that can be done. If I look at this, um, the, again, it's part of a study, and it was about when you use real-time feedback on a form, you got 22. This isn't necessarily, it's not like you do this, you get 22% increase in your sales, but it was just a form sort of test between one and the other. And success rate also included accuracy and other, other key parts. But it's like, you know, here we are, someone who may not even be thinking about logging back into the website, because unless you're going back into an Amazon or a site that you're always using, you often does not forget that password. But actually, we could, we could detect that password and say, hey, welcome back, enter your password, speed you through the form, we've got your address, update your address. So these are the things that we think about and we try to influence. And a lot of the time, you can use defaults. You can certainly study. And the vast, I mean, here's a huge sweeping statement. Most people shop, buy, and deliver it to themselves in one of two locations. That's it. It's often as not delivered to that office location. You can use defaults. And, from, and if you don't know what it is, you could do a lot worse than just starting out by saying, yeah, using that kind of checkbox. And then it says, my shipping address is the same as my billing. Just, you know, all things that can significantly speed people through. Um, we're huge fans of using Postcode Lookup. This happens to be a UK postal partner. Obviously, it's different depending on where you are and if you're using other parts, but zip codes and the like. It just comes back to that same philosophy of speeding things through. And for people who are into Apple, if you've got iOS 8, when you're now transacting on, if you're just, just in browser looking at a mobile website and you get to uh, that payment page, it's starting to detect it. And you can actually put, you can make sure you marry it up, scan my card, scan your card, auto fills it in for you. So if you didn't know that little tip, it's, it's awesome. It's gonna, these are things that are going to really, really help. Um, and I just hate some of the jargon that ends up around e-commerce sites. And this is an example here. This is a huge global retailer um, site. And just things I put out, you know, don't worry, the SSL has got your site secured. Right? We're all secure, we've got the SSL. Right, this is a tech room here maybe, and maybe we know what SSL stands for. But where's the context? What does that I mean? 
Is that really helping users? And there's other little things here. It's like, you know, add your CVV. And we see CVV and we see CV2. And I think if you're shopping a lot, you kind of know what it means. It's the little bit on the back. But that's still really doesn't show any great customer care, and I think you can improve it. In fact, I have to say, the only thing I liked about this, it was Uniqlo, I don't mind saying this, I'm going to name it. The only thing I liked about this site is they really asked us to help improve their site. So I really went to town and said, you know what, you should do this, you should do that, why didn't you do this? And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just waiting for their agency to call me up. That should be fun. Um, Buttons has been a design tool used by designers and developers and I've read blog posts that said we changed the word on this button and how come you know this form went up by 200 percent and and, I, and I, generally speaking the whole thing about button it's just got to be the thing you expect it to be don't really make people read it's the thing and it's got to be non-confusion and I just could put context continue with care here is a particularly odd site selling guns it seems but it um but uh, here we are, maybe I skipped over that just a little bit too quick, and it's like uh, we're, we're on a form, we're going through, we're in the e-commerce journey of this particular site, and it says continue shopping. That's actually taking you, you're, you're about to buy the good, and you hit continue shopping, and it takes you out of the shopping cart. You know, that's a really, it's a bit of an old example, but I'm still seeing things like this. And then if that's old, this is the new problem. The new problem around decluttering is as new things come out, as new trends come out, there's the temptation to keep adding stuff to pages, adding the badges, adding this. And here we are. You can register. You can log in all with Facebook, all with Google. And they're just kind of adding all of those, the, uh, those details. You know, again, we can unify. We can simplify. Um, that sometimes getting caught up with the idea of giving customer more choice is actually detrimental. Maybe not always, but there's a come on, one of my favorites. You know, you can measure this stuff. This is the other great stuff. Guesswork is gone. We can measure stuff. And... Um, Favorite hobby haul to most people is like you know passwords. I mean, it's still a still a problem we've all got. We've all got. But the you know if you are a small you you're building out uh, almost any e-commerce website unless it's this huge global website. If you it's the first time someone's transacting with you and you ask them to set up an account before they can pay. Imagine doing that in a shop. Oh, you want to buy that that good that jacket? That jacket looks great. The suit fits you. It's really well. Well, if you can just come over here and open this account with no other benefit apart from, well, no, we just want your details. But two things happen. One, three in nine people in a test left and said, I wouldn't go past this. Well, that's customers walking out the door, which is, and, and of those people that even went through, they then expected to be spam. And I just said, what a bad expectation you've just set that customer. I really want to buy it. I'm going to have to register, but now I, I'm already losing trust. You know, just little, very, very little kind of things that I think are really important. Um, Search, I actually I managed to speed this one up by cutting lots of parts out. I've got a very simple thing about search. If you're gonna have, search on a website can be really, really important. If you get this, someone searches on it and they get a result not found, it will be your highest reason for people to leave. And uh, I just say search, do it properly, do it brilliantly, or don't do it at all. If anyone saw the case study on Lush, lush.co.uk, site that we built, we put, it wasn't just another module, one feature. You know, search was a whole, for those people who are into Agile, it was a two-week sprint of two developers, minimum, plus way more, plus a dedicated search box. We really made search the key point of navigation. And search is incredibly important. You know, that's why one of the, 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 the highest net value company in the world ultimately makes 95% of their revenue through search, regardless of the, the Google car and the mapping and everything else. It's the search is a, such a premium product. It's not super hard to get right, but never under, just, just don't just stick on a search box somewhere. If you do, people will use it and they'll get this and they'll leave. That's, that's my kind of takeaway on search. Um, recommendations. We like to be recommended. Hey, where did you eat last night? Was it good? Ah, Great. Have you got the name of that restaurant? I want to go. Recommendations is hugely important, but at the moment it's being faked everywhere. If you look at the world through my lens, which is I hope you don't have to, and it, it, this is uh, maybe slightly a UK centric, but I th and I'm no great football man, but I know that the Premier uh, League is a, is a pretty big thing globally. So here we have, you know, I am looking at the Manchester. I could even get this wrong. The, the, the Manchester United shirt. Okay, the Manchester United shirt. I'm I'm, I'm in the mode of buying it, but apparently. People who looked at that, if that's going to click on, and people who actually looked at the Manchester United, well, according to this, they also looked at the Arsenal away shirt. 
which doesn't sound so far. But maybe they did. They were just looking around. And, but, you know, then they looked at the Chelsea home strip. But guess better. Ultimately, the person who looked at Manchester United bought the Liverpool top. Right? Now, for those people who don't know their football, this is not going to happen, right? This is, this, that, that has never happened. I'm like, really? That's not real. And this is, this is live still now. This site is a, is, it's a huge website, multi-million pound business that has built that. And I'm like, what the WTF has uh, a flag up a bit for? And this was from a last year stat that John Lewis, however, put much more of a machine learning kind of people who bought this also bought this. And they did some great metrics. And this was a report. It's on e-consultancy. It talks about recommendations, really h hiking sales. Um, and we've seen it as well. We worked with a company called Nosto. And they do that kind of machine learning pattern behavior based on what people have done. And we're seeing this make a really good effect. And the first thing we did on a site that we helped take over was we stuck it on a search results page because they had a really bad search. And it was learning. And it soon filled up. And nobody ever got, you know, didn't get that horrible no results page. Um, so there's some, there's some really good tech. It doesn't have to be Drupal, but it can work really nicely with. Um, how are we doing time? If that's, if I'm right? No, I think we are. We're okay. We've got about three minutes. So, and I'm, I'm at number 10, which I decided to finish with any of bonus material. So lots of what I've talked about here, and I've th hopefully I've threaded through, is you know, a, a, a statement I just love. You cannot manage what you don't measure. And it, where we are today, you can measure everything. You can really measure stuff. And this here, this statistic is from a sage pay report. They've got a couple downstairs on the sage pay stand. This is a small group. You should go and get it. It's called the, uh, I think it's either the landmark or the payment uh, the reference for it is the, something like the Payment Landscape Report. They interviewed 1,500 business owners, thousands of users. They, it's a really good piece. It's, I think it's almost aimed slightly towards academia, not fully, but it's a great report. They've got a few copies left downstairs. And it's talked about here, they define successful businesses that track dropouts. They also have studied where people drop out, and this is kind of just really great takeaway stuff to, 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 um, to know. So wrapping up, the takeaway bonus material was um, also just a couple of things that I said, ah, things that I'm kind of thinking of at the moment. Uh, this guy obviously doesn't do user testing because he looks way too happy. But 90% um, of, we've got this, this, this phenomenon now, my house, you sit on the sofa, and there's, you know, there's a tablet and there's a, there's a mobile device, and we're switching devices more and more and more. So yeah, and in e-commerce, this is super high. Um, and I guess the ultimate takeaway for the three things is, I think hopefully stuff here that you could take away, but each percentage is quite hard for. It can't, it's, it, 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 but focus on the little stuff because it's the little stuff that drives people mad. It erodes trust, it, and people sometimes bomb out. And, and just measure the results. Um, and something I put in when I'm trying to push Drupal, this is one of the things I say, you know, if the technology is right, you're going to really struggle to get the user experience. So you owe it to yourself. You need to have the right technology platform, but you also then need to not be so caught up on that because you just need to focus on the customer experience. And I think that's pretty much the time, which is a miracle. Thanks very much. Of course, I'll take any questions. So thank you. Thanks a lot for this presentation. Actually, you're, it's a typical human computer interaction concepts, but you are trying to do to improve the e commerce through those fines. And there is a huge research has been done last 10 years in the area of human computer interaction. Do you have any studies that shows that if we do those small, small, tiny things and care about them in our websites and e-commerce, is it really affecting the income? And uh, is there any study shows that it's, there is a percentage of improvement? Or how much is that improvement? Or not? no studies have yeah, been done the, yet? The, the, uh, uh, several of the things in the early part of this um, uh, come from uh, Baymard Institute. Very happy to put if these slides are going up or whatever, or I'll give you the thing. Baymard Institute have done uh, a study. They, they looked at the top, I might be wrong here, 40 or 50 in terms of transactional websites, and they did some detailed studies. And um, they also have done some actually eye tracking and usability and done studies. And there was just one or two things that I had here around like 22% increase in success. Um, that's one particular good source, and there are a couple of others that I have referenced here that, that you know, everything I reference I will happily share. But there are some, but I actually think it's a weakness. The, 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 I get frustrated that there is not more 
a sort of academic rigor in this commercial area and where it exists, even worse, people in our position don't look at that reference material. They just could, we're all out there learning by iteration and mistake, and yet there is some pretty good academic stuff. The Baymard Institute is one. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. With that, well, thanks everyone for your time. Hugely appreciated.